Hey, hey everyone, welcome to Watch Complications. I'm Brian. If you're a subscriber or you watch the channel regularly, I'm so sorry there's been such a gap between my previous video and this one. I have so many projects going on, both in my little watch world and it's summer and it's time to get things done around the house. Homeowners, you can feel me, but I'm still here and I hope you enjoy this particular video. If you're coming across my channel for the first time, you like what you see, consider hitting that subscribe, follow me on Instagram and check out my website, watchcomplications.com. All the links are in the description below. Stick around, have a good time. And also, just for people to realize that I've turned some new things on in the channel, there's super thanks now. If you wanna you know, buy me a cup of coffee, there's memberships and my store is up, which has all kinds of merchandise. And there's some other merchandise uh, that I'll have up on my website soon. People watch my channel for a variety of reasons because it's a very varied channel, obviously. And so there's everything from reviews of watches, accessories, you've got low cost watches, everybody needs a good Casio, right? All the way up to Hode Horology. There's no watch snobbery here. You know, we just love all things watches. And then there's the watchmaking side of the channel and exploring watches and taking that journey. There are a lot of enthusiasts or collectors that are wanting to get into some, you know, basic tinkering and stuff. So I have watch tool reviews, like what are the basic tools you would need if you wanted to do, like start square one, right? Replacing straps, maybe uh, changing a battery, and then you just keep going down that particular road, right? But then really some of my most popular videos are around dial making and custom watches. People like the uh, concept or the, the idea of, I wanna make a custom watch for myself or for somebody, and how do I make that happen? How do I make a custom dial or modify it? What are some of the processes? What's the how-to? What, what, what works, what doesn't work, the testing videos that I do. So I have shown, you know, here's the stuff you want to have if you wanna get started, right? Everything from, I wanna change the strap on my watch or I wanna change batteries and you keep going down the road as you get into mechanical watches and maybe stuff you wanna do around that and tinkering. I wanna learn how to take a watch apart, put it back together. I've covered sort of the basic tools and more advanced tools around doing that kind of stuff, opening a case, putting it back together, et cetera. But what I wanna show you here are the tools that a watchmaker is gonna have behind the scenes that's helping them be creative, fix problems, take things apart, put them back together, um, and to create. And that's what we're gonna do today. But real quick, before we get to the cool tools, wrist check for today. Now, I've already posted a picture of this to my channel members. So if you want like early access and previews, what's going on behind the scenes, you can always become a member. But I purchased something recently and in a couple weeks after I've worn it around quite a bit, I've had it on for a couple days now, is gonna be a watch review in the future. This is uh, the Tudor. This is the Black Bay Ceramic, it's 41 millimeter. It's got an in-house caliber, 70 hour power reserve. This is a, a stealth watch. It's got a vintage look to it. I, I don't know, this is just the one, I'm not a, I am not a Tudor fan say so but this particular watch has been on my radar a little bit i was thinking you know as i talked to my ad it's like i'm waiting on a particular watch on the rolex side of things and i'm like but if this particular tutor shows up i'll be interested i go in the other day there's one sitting in the case they just got and i'm like I couldn't stop myself like it was an impulse almost i, I mean i already had it that's not necessarily true. I, I had made the decision if I saw it and it was available, I would get it. I did that, <laughs> much to the detriment of my bank account um, and save my watch fund and saving for other stuff. There's there's things coming in the future. Um, I'm sort of a long-term thinker about my collection. You better be too or else you'll just go insane. Um, scratch that. I'm insane anyway. <laughs> Sorry for the tangent. But I'm not a Tudor fan. This is the only one I've ever seen that I actually like. I actually got a look at the new Ranger. They had a new Ranger that just came in and I saw it and I was like, mm. actually the Ranger, if you see it on the bracelet, the new one, doesn't look as good as it would on the same hybrid strap that has the, the dark white sort of cream color stitching on it. That contrast with the new Ranger would look really good. Man, I keep getting off today. What's going on? I'm not a fan of the snowflake hand, but the combination of the dial markers, you got the, the triangle at 12 and, and the dots, the rectangles, 
And with everything sort of being blacked out, it's a little more subtle and the snowflake hand doesn't bother me as much on this one. So this is the only model I could ever see myself buying and I'm cool with it. The movement looks really cool. It's all blacked out too. Yeah, that review is coming up hopefully in the near future, a few weeks maybe, gotta wear it around, right? But it's got pros and cons like all watches do as I always say and pros sort of outweigh the cons. We put up with things, we tolerate the, the few niggles we might have with a watch because of the pros. And that's what I'm feeling here, but I'm loving it, I'm enjoying it, and more on that soon. So my five favorite watchmaking tools. Four of these are very distinct and they take up space. I've got them set around on tables here so you can see them. And I'll say them, a lot of times I'll have them down in uh, my sort of workshop area. One, because they're loud, noisy, messy, that kind of thing. But I'm going to be putting the camera in, down in these different angles that are a little bit maybe weird. But that's just because I've got them set up around here. So we're going to be moving the camera around a little bit. Don't freak out about that. So the first tool, I'm going to say tools I'm going to talk about, I will ask, beg you to be a little bit more flexible with me because it's going to harken back to uh, some of the basics. And then we're going to get into these larger distinct tools. But to do work every day, you need a few really good basic tools. And let me just say, what are the sort of the three things I use the most um, on every day. Magnification, a good headset, calipers, and screwdrivers. The sort of like hand head tools that you need to do watch work. And yeah, I, I know that's sort of lumping some things together, but that's the reality. Now, trust me, the other four are very distinct tools. But so my favorite headset i've reviewed this before i have an entire video just on this this headset is just awesome it's held up it's got different lenses different magnification an led on the front strapped just fits snug around the head that kind of thing so headset bergeon screwdrivers i've mentioned this in several videos you got to have something like this don't go cheap on a screwdriver set get the real deal and this is the Bergeon 5970. You, you just can't go wrong. If you're gonna get into serious watchmaking, you need a solid set of screwdrivers, period. And then calipers, again, something I've shown before, a good set of digital calipers. They don't cost that much money. And they, I, I'm measuring stuff all the time, like all the time whether it's getting the size of a dial, measuring the thickness of something, the width of a screw, the um, height of uh, a movement holder inside of a case, whatever it is, you can't get by without it. And I'm gonna say those three things, good set of screwdrivers, uh, the headset and the calipers, throw in a really good set of tweezers, that's number one. So the category just the best tools, right? Let's get to the real stuff. Okay, there's four more. So if you happen to be like a watch hobbyist, you've gotten into some of the basics, the sort of natural progression might be take a watch apart, put it back together. If you're gonna do that, one of the things that naturally evolves from that is watch restoration. Take an old watch, it's got maybe some problems, it just needs cleaned up, it's not working very well, you take it apart, fix whatever problems there might be, put it back together. Well, when you do that, you need to clean the watch and re-oil it and things like that, because so, it's a mechanical system. And to do that, to do that well, you would need a cleaning machine to do that. Now, you can do, you know, ultrasonic stuff. I'm not a huge fan of ultrasonic, particularly with restoration. You just never know um, what might go wrong with it or the quality of the machine can vary a lot. Not, not, I'm not saying ultrasonic is bad. It's just I like sort of the old school approach to watch cleaning. And that means an old school cleaning machine. So let's look at mine. I'll give you a, a nice proper look at the Black Bay Ceramic Master Chronometer. Nice, right? Yeah. My LNR Master Watch Cleaning Machine. These things are old. They're awesome. 
but if you're going to do watch restoration, this is the kind of thing that you need. They don't make this kind of stuff anymore. Like I said, ultrasonic is sort of the way. Just to reiterate, I'm not going to go super detailed on these. I've got future videos planned. We'll say within the next year where I'm going to do some watch restoration stuff. I'll show the process of using the machine in cleaning watch parts. But I will give you just the very basic general idea here. You can see there are three jars. You'll put different cleaning solutions in these jars. And this arm has a basket on it. You put the watch parts in there and then you go between the different locations through a process to clean the watch parts. There's a heater in this one. You can turn the heater on and off when it's on. This little red light will uh, turn on. This is originally as it was when it was made. It was an LNR Master. There's a guy that refurbishes these machines. And one of the things he does, if it's a model like this, is he actually modifies it. This will work like the Mastermatic. It's a different model of the machine. In the forward position, it will just rotate in one direction. But in the reverse direction, it will automatically go forward and reverse, which is the Mastermatic function. So this is a modified Master. They just don't make stuff like this anymore. It's extremely heavy. I mean, it, this is just solid machinery. Of course, since it's been refurbished, all the wiring has been updated. So it's like, you know... There's no weirdness with the electrical and the, the parts have been replaced. It's, man, it's, it's, just, it's just heavy. Uh, it's amazing. You can see the, the, the coating is all new. It's got the original tag on it. And like I said, I'm not going to talk about and compare it to other types of more modern sort of machinery. But like if you're a serious watchmaker, you probably have something like this in the shop. And it's going to do a great job, old school, of cleaning watch parts. And... You see the handle here, let me pull this up. This slides up and down so it can go between the different jars and locations, but you can see the basket there. This would be full of watch parts. And I'll show a lot more detail in future video. Heater's down in here, so once it's gone through the liquids in the cleaning process, you can go down in here and dry off. Now, I don't know if you can see the text, probably a little bit small, but l &R was based out of New Jersey in the US. A lot of old school tools aren't necessarily Swiss, good stuff, really good stuff. Some of the best stuff was made in the U.S. because pocket watches was, was where sort of watches really evolved from. You know, think, okay, read longitude, right? You've, you know, old chronometers on, on boats and stuff. But pocket watches is really where the, the personal watch started. And that eventually came, became wristwatches and the Swiss took over. But back in the day, you had companies like, you know, Walton and Elgin, you know, U.S. watchmaking. And so a lot of the tools around cleaning and doing watch work were made in the U.S. And they are well-made, solid, and if taken care of and really cared for, refurbished if necessary, these things will last longer than any of us. A lot of these things were made 60s, 70s. So, yeah, good old l &R precision cleaning machine. A serious watchmaker is going to have something like this or this. Now, I know this is just more <laughs> static looking at this stuff and me talking, but I don't know. I, I'm, I just want to show the tools. You know, it's, it's like, this is like pure mechanical science. It's, it's, it's mechanical engineering. It's machining. Now, the magic of watchmaking, you know, like if you're going to talk square one bare bones is a lathe basically machine parts you can create your own tools in fact in watchmaking school you would start with first create your own tools and with those tools then you're going to make watch parts and <laughs> do other work so there's a motor back here i actually have a variable pedal so i can control the speed at which this goes but this hooks to the the wheels back here and this whole thing spins obviously at a high rate and then you can do different things like, you know, so milling and cutting and et cetera, et cetera. Again, this is something that was made in the US back in the day. You just don't find stuff like this anymore. A lot, of course, a lot of things nowadays are CNC'd and hey, I love CNC machines. I'm using a CNC machine on a project right now. Great stuff. But at the same time, if you're going with just regular old tools, you're gonna have a lathe which you can do all kinds of machining and work. This is a complete package here. I've got the, the tail stock, head stock, and you know, the rest, I've got light. This is, this is a cool light, I like whoever designed this, because I just pushed down, I've got a light right there, do stuff with, of course, it's got the magnifier. Having a, a watchmaker's lathe and the different attachments and tools that go along with it, just enable 
ton of creativity, whether that's, again, like I said, making your own tools, everything over you can see over in this box, which I'll get to in a second, you can make this stuff with this. So this is take a piece of metal and turn it into whatever you want. That's the power of a lathe, a mill, or more modern, obviously, is computerized CNC machines, right? And I will mention, none of this stuff is cheap. Getting a really good, basically brand new or refurbished old school cleaning machine, not cheap. A lathe like this, we're not talking hundreds of dollars here, okay? We're talking thousands of dollars. Each of these tools individually is in the thousands typically. Keep that in mind if you want to take this hobby to the next step. A lot of people are going to stay on that in hobbyist enthusiast side of things. I spend just as much money, if not more, on watch tools as I do on watches. So sometimes it's better to be on the collecting side of things, I think. I've tried to figure out more about this particular lathe. It's hard to find stuff. They're, they didn't keep too much documentation or records about this stuff. This was from a company in Lancaster, PA, Amish country, Precision Machine Co. This was in their first run. This is, this is I can't remember the exact number on this one. I think it's like 96 or 97. This was in the first 100 lathes that they made. And it's all matching numbers on all of it. So I, I love this thing. And it gives me that flexibility to create whatever I want. Now what we have over here on the right is sort of a counterpart, which can be used along with a lathe or you know on its own this is a staking set again old school expensive we're talking these days if you can find a set that's mostly complete good condition you're talking thousands of dollars this is probably i would say one of the most desired ones this is called the inverto this is made by kendrick and davis so k and d lebanon new hampshire this is inverto number 18-r it's mostly complete. There are a few pieces missing. I could always make them or find replacements maybe if I needed to or wanted to put them. But this has pretty much everything I've ever needed in my life. But if you were going to get into true sort of watchmaking, having a staking set, because this is going to give you the ability to do things like remove jewels and set jewels, do different types of milling, and a million other details, I will show use of this in future videos. Along with a lathe, maybe I'll get it. It's hard to really video and show lathe work because it's it's loud, it's it's messy, but um, I will show some specific videos around usage of these tools. But I'll give you one example right now here in just a second. Having a staking set, and I, like I said, I'm not going in depth here. If you want to look up um, all the different kind of things it can do, and this is sort of like a baby darling of, of my watch tool collection. I've got Watchy pro for like maintaining your watch collection. I kind of need an app at this point for keeping track of my watch tools. So the example I was talking about where the, something out of this kit can come in handy is I'm working on a custom project right now for a client. I was making a custom bezel, kind of see it there. This is actually going to be a countdown bezel. You see I've started looming it out, but I have a handheld tool. And one of the things I needed to do on this custom bezel was they want to loom on these minute markers, these dots. And I had this bezel made and lasered these locations, but the laser didn't cut deep enough or, or, you know, in terms of how much loom I could put into the dots, the locations here, the minute markers. And so I put one of the tips from my staking set. This is one of the milling tools. This thing is like tiny. I think this one is like point, let me see what it is, 0.69. So number seven, that's this very, very tiny milling tool. And by hand, I opened up those locations so I could fit more loom into the bezel insert for this particular custom build. So whether it's something that's going to be used on another machine like my lathe, or I put one of these tips or components into a hand tool of another sort, it helps me create custom watch parts. And that's really what it's all about at the end of the day in terms of being a watchmaker. And don't worry, I've got a lot more to say about that custom project once I've got it done, which hopefully will happen in the next month or two. All right, for this last section, I'm going rogue. So I'm gonna hand hold this thing so I can kind of show it the way I want. I'll try to keep it as stable as possible to give your eyes a break. I love creating, I love designing. I use AutoCAD, I use Fusion 360. Besides the desk tools, my most used piece of equipment. My Lulzbot Mini 2, this is a company that's also based out of Colorado, made in the USA, 
half of this printer is made with other 3D printers. <laughs> it is beautiful. I love it. Again, we're talking into the thousands. This is about 1500 bucks. I make so many parts on this. It gives you the ability to prototype. I make custom watches. I do watch repair. I do restoration. I do a lot of stuff, but my favorite thing to do and sort of my own personal niche and service I provide to a lot of people is making custom holders to fit particular movements into cases that weren't designed to hold them. So I design those parts, I print them out, and I ship them off to customers around the world. 3D printer, just like a lathe, I'll show you that again, just like the lathe, a 3D printer gives me the ability to innovate, to create, to design, and make something unique, make something new. If you think of it, you can do it. And I, I print stuff on this from t toys for my kids to, of course, the watch parts and projects that I show you on the channel. So a 3D printer, again, something that you don't want to skimp on. If you were going to take this seriously, like with the staking set, with the, there's my tidbit, by the way, I, I love programming that thing. It tells me I should wear my Armstrong Gravity Water today. I have it telling me what watch I should wear um, for my collection. It randomly chose for me, although I'm wearing the tutor today. But staking set and lathe, they give you the ability to create. And this is a more modern version of that. Design it and print it and it becomes a useful part you can use in a watch. And I do it all the time. All right, let's check out. I certainly hope you got something out of this video. Even if you're not going to get that deep into watchmaking, you want to stay on that sort of enthusiast, hobbyist level. At least it helps build some appreciation for the tools that are used, the cost, and understanding around the processes, the importance of tools, their age, their use, and, and really what goes into it. It's not as simple as it might seem on its face. It is an extremely complex world. There is a lot of knowledge that is uh, individualized. It's, it's not often shared so much, uh, particularly these days. It's just this profession that's fading away. And the people that know the little details, it fades away. And then someone like me who is trying to learn and rediscover it and sort of find it um, in their own sort of way is, you know, it takes time, it takes energy, and it, there's a lot, so much to it and so much to learn, uh, just like so many fields out there. But um, this is one that I hope can find its place again, particularly in American watchmaking, because um, it's something of a lost art uh, in this country, and I hope it can be found again. You know, maybe particularly mechanical watches have experienced a little bit of a renaissance in, in recent times, It'd be nice to see that continue to grow, but that has to translate into people that can find these tools or buy these tools. I mean, a lot of this stuff's not made anymore uh, because it's, it's faded away that much. Uh, it'd be nice to see that sort of make a comeback and become really a full-blown, appreciated, and understood, and a, a career path right, for people that are really interested in doing this sort of a work, but it's a very hard thing to do these days. Kind of like farming, which is the world I'm from. It's just like, you're not gonna get into it kind of unless you're born into it. And it's not the career paths or the things that are right on the front, you know, of what's possible. Um, or maybe where the money is, that kind of thing. But you gotta do what makes you happy. And if this is something that makes you happy, learn as much about it as you can and see where it takes you. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Check out all stuff on watchcomplications.com. Everything's in the description below. Follow the links. Have fun. And we'll see you around. I'm out.